This is my Kokoni EC2 3D printer, and today I'm gonna use it to see how many things I can fix around the office with only 3D printed parts. For example, I currently have six loose SD cards that I'm constantly swapping in and out of different cameras during the editing process. And normally this really wouldn't even be a problem, except I happen to have a cat named Mr. Bigglesworth who thinks the SD cards are actually play toys. And it seems like every time I turn my back or I'm not looking, he ends up swiping one or two of them off my desk, causing me to lose SD cards all the time. Time. So to solve this, I use my 3D printer to create a secure storage solution. I love this design in particular because it has a hinged door. This makes it so that since the SD cards are securely stored, even if this box were to be knocked off my desk, none of the SD cards would actually fall out. But what's genuinely the most impressive about this design is that I can step my 6'1", 210-pound body on top of it, and it will not break or get damaged at all. It is that sturdy. Oh, and one little thing I forgot to mention is that I've never actually used a 3D printer before, so we're gonna be learning on the fly together. I mean, hey, the website said it's plug and play, it's user friendly, so what could go wrong? Now, one thing you guys have seen me use a lot in my videos is a tape measure like this one here because it does a phenomenal job of demonstrating to the audience the exact size or dimensions of a product. The problem is using a big tape measure is awkward and distracting while filming, not to mention the fact that this is actually the household tape measure and it needs to stay inside the toolbox in my garage. So my initial plan was to go on Amazon and find the cheapest ruler that I could buy, but then it dawned on me now that that I have a 3D printer, why not just go into the printer app and see if we can find a 3D rendering and just print our own? So I went to the app store and downloaded the Kokoni 3D mobile app. So we've gone ahead and started our first print and I wanna show you guys this app because it's really cool. So when I open it up here, we can monitor the progress. And as you can see right now, I think we're what, 84% done. Come over here and let me show you the printer though. It's really cool, it's printing the numbers. I don't know if you can get a good shot of that. As you guys can see, it has a tinted door on the front. The top right here has a nice oval opening. And this cartridge that you see right here on the back is actually feeding all the filament into the printer itself. Now for our purposes here, I went into the 3D model gallery, scrolled down a little bit, and actually ended up having to use the search bar at the top. But lo and behold, I found a 3D rendering of a ruler. So I pressed print now and here are the results. All right, it's been about an hour now and we are all complete. Let's go ahead and take out our mold and see how it came out. Check this out. Hoo -hoo. Oh wow, it's magnetic. Look at that. Moment of truth. Let me go ahead and snap this bad boy off the plate and we'll see if it's functional. Now, as a content creator, I always have my phone next to me. And when I'm streaming or editing a video, my phone just kind of floats across the surface of my desk. And let me tell you, this is definitely not ideal when using a mouse and keyboard since you need plenty of space for your arms and computer hardware. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this is a relatively simple problem that our 3D printer should have no problem solving. So I went back into the Kokoni 3D printing app and was able to find several phone stand options to choose from. Ultimately, I ended up landing on this one because I like the overall aesthetic aesthetic and the folding functionality. So with just the press of a button, I got to printing and a few hours later, I opened the door and realized that our 3D printing mold had a serious problem. So even though our printer did a really good job of replicating the 3D render that we had given it, I wasn't able to actually separate the two hinged legs. Upon closer inspection, it seemed that the hinge was actually fused together. Now, of course, I tried to use several different blades and tools to chisel the extra filament away, but ended up using a bit too much force and ended up snapping one of the legs off completely. Now the good news is the stand is actually still functional and that's because even with the separated legs, it somehow still is able to hold its balance. Ultimately though, I ended up using it as a nice stand to display my Game Boy Color that I received as a child in 1998. And I have to admit, broken or not, this stand is sturdy and looks great for display purposes. Now probably the biggest problem in the entire YouTube studio and more importantly on my YouTube channel is that even though I gain approximately 100 150 million views per year, the subscriber count doesn't always stay relative. And that's why I use my 3D printer to print a custom text that says the word subscribe, and I'm hoping that this will solve the problem. Just, just, just press the subscribe button. J just press it. Just press it. Now, because I eat at my desk, it's not uncommon for small particles of food or even crumbs to get inside my keyboard. Now, to clean this mess up properly, you actually need to remove the keycaps, and to do it, you need a keycap removal tool, and unfortunately for me, I seem to have misplaced mine, which leaves me unable to remove any of the keys on my keyboard. Now, lucky for me, opening up my Kokoni 3D app, I can simply just print one with the press of a button. And while scrolling through the 3D model gallery, I was able to find a 3D rendering 
of a keycap remover. Once my print was done, I quickly snapped off my 3D print off the magnetic plate and discovered that it was in fact not a keycap removal tool, but instead a sturdy pair of tweezers. This is when I started to realize just how impressive 3D printing actually is. On the one hand, my human error had incorrectly assessed what the actual 3D rendering was, but on the other, the 3D printer printed me off a sturdy and functional piece of hardware that I could use in my studio. Now, of course, this isn't gonna translate well on camera, but when you get these tweezers in your hand, you realize that these are much more sturdy than any plastic mass-produced tweezers that you'd buy off Amazon. Realizing now how powerful this piece of technology is, it reminds me of a quote from one of my favorite movies. With great power comes great responsibility. And it was at that moment I knew there was only one thing I could do to test out my new power. And that is to use the 3D scanning feature built into the Kokoni 3D app to resurrect a statue of myself. To do it, I decided to use this picture of myself that I took at a football game last weekend. The 3D scanner used its space alien technologies to predict exactly what the backside of my head looks like. And in doing so, it ended up spitting out one of the most cursed renderings of me that the internet has ever laid eyes on. Seriously, that does not look like me. And even though I didn't know whether to be excited or terrified, the 3D printer software seemed to approve, and so I pulled the trigger and started the print. Ah, uh, you see the resemblance? Huh? You see it? Fine. And all jokes aside, this 3D rendering of my portrait is actually really impressive. The only thing it couldn't do was the bill on my hat, which is why it looks like someone stuck a bowl over the top of my head and cut my hair along the line. Also, I don't know why, but breaking away all the filament supports on these 3D prints is so satisfying. As you can imagine, this print took quite a while to complete, just over six hours to be exact, and while I was waiting, I had to go to the grocery store, and that's when I got to test out my favorite feature, which is remote access to the internal camera. With it, you can check on your prints in real time or even do a 10 second time lapse of the entire print. Now, of course, we couldn't end this video without meddling in the affairs of artificial intelligence. I had so much fun playing around with the Kokoni EC2 3D printer today. And if you guys want to check one out for yourself, I will leave the link down in the description below. If you happen to be new, hit that subscribe button. And guys, go check out one of these two videos next. Come on, what are you doing? Get out of here, go! <laughs> Welcome back to Out of the Box. All right, so today we got a brand new, oh no, 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 I don't like that intro already. <laughs> Start it over. Yeah, no, it's really good. <laughs> now I can measure stuff. All right, so for print number two, I'm gonna use something that, oh. All right, so for print number two, I'm gonna make something 